how a Republican can win, whether it's me or somebody else. And it has to be much more uplifting, much more positive, much more willing to, you know, to be practical now in Washington world, lose the primary to win the general right. without violating your principles. You need people starting in your family, uh, but going to your friends uh, beyond a, a, a larger circle who will really be there for you and continue to treat you like a human being uh, because you can... And both of them were trying to trying to show there's some authenticity, trying to show they're not totally yeah. trying to play a political game here. Well, I think, it, you know, I think Jeb has a less of a problem with that than, than Hillary. She clearly has had the troubles with this whole issue of does she understand what it's like to be a real person, you know, like in... 22 years, she hasn't walked alone. Right. I mean, that's not, not necessarily her fault. I mean, she's had Secret Service protection for 22 years. That is tough. And, you know, she's had a couple of sort of bad gaffes of saying right. things about what, what, you know, qualifies to being middle class, things like that. Yeah. And I think she's trying to at least acknowledge that she's got these problems and take it head on, which I think is smart on, on her part. And, you know, I think Jeb is looking at the reality that he's too nice and too affable yeah. and isn't really going to go out there and, and bang on Democrats the way that conservatives will. And I think that's sort of the, what they're both trying to look at. So, Mary, you ready for Hillary? Yeah, we're going to know in 16 what's going to happen based upon what they do on immigration and what they do on the budget. If Boehner and McConnell get deals on immigration and, and, uh, and the budget and don't let the government get shut down, then we're going to have a real race in 16. I'm ready for Hillary, though. What do you think about Jeb Bush's authenticity there, Rick? He's saying, basically saying, look, I'm not going to, I'm going to stay who I am. You may not agree with me. And somebody basically saying, you don't agree with me on immigration and uh, Common Core conservatives, but I'm not going to placate you on those two issues. Listen, immigration, very important. Common Core, I would like to think that the Republicans would have loftier issues that they would concentrate <laughs> on when they then, their candidate yeah. for 2016. Well, I, by the way, I have you here, the economy. Uh, I'm going to get a ton of emails today. Gosh darn you, meet the press. Great news in the economy, and you haven't done anything given President Obama praise. What say you in the economy right it now? It is great improvement. We've come a long way. But remember, let's not get too happy about six-year cures for two-year flus. We've been long out of this recession. A lot of people aren't cheering. We had a good wage growth in that number. and we had That's good what job. makes that one However, legit. Right. Right, that Hospitality wage growth. and leisure yeah. gets the most hiring, but they represent the smallest percentage of yeah. the wage growth. That's the problem. You talked about all the wealth in Congress. Yeah. There's a lot of wealth in D.C. There's not a lot not of wealth throughout all the country no, shared equally. We definitely yeah, that's have right. a, a that's inequality right. issue. 57 and months, 10 million jobs isn't enough, huh? Nine, 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 by the way, what's enough in a row. is when people who need it the most, oh, absolutely. when we look at the but issues that got, happened yeah. mm -hmm. in New York. Yeah, but okay. we also got to talk about 321,000 jobs. If we stay in the same pace. In we stay in the same pay. Job, 57 months. No, if we stay in the same and, pay. And that's despite most government policy not because of yeah, it. Yeah, that's what you say. We're now. the most resilient you economy. You weren't on saying the that when George Bush was president. I have said it, oh, sir. Okay, all along. Well, good. I got a football break for you guys because I want to talk about some absurdity and what I think is going to happen at 12:30 Eastern time today when we find out about the college football playoff. The good news is we have a playoff. But think about how that would play out if they applied the same logic that they're going to use. Uh, to find out who the final four is for college football if we did it for the presidential race. It's as if we took a mayor, a reporter from the Cook Political Report, an economic expert from CNBC, and a tattooed D.C. bureau chief from BuzzFeed and said, okay, guys, <laughs> you get to decide the party's nominee. We have primaries to tell you the scores of games that took place, but you can take those primaries into consideration and you four get to decide who the nominees are. Is that a fair process? Well, isn't that how Absolutely. they did in the old days? This is the smoke-filled room. Smoke-filled yeah. room right? college that football. You guys comfortable with this? I mean, it's how college football does everything anyway, right? I mean, college football play out. You know, it's as if we uh, held our presidential race and had 538 people in an electoral college decide who was president. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's what we have. Anyway, I think this, let me just hope if they leave out an undefeated team, if they leave out an undefeated team, wins should still matter more than data, right? I am too much data. Who cares about who controls the game? I want to know who wins the game anyway. Thank you, guys. That's all for today. We'll be back next week because if it's Sunday.